Israel's planned retaliatory attack on Iran reportedly ready. This says Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu takes a swipe at President Biden, saying Israel will decide how to best to retaliate against Iran's recent aggression, not the United States. But Netanyahu also told Biden in a phone call last week that Israel would not target Iran's nuclear and oil facilities and will instead aim for military or intelligence targets. The first components of the U.S. anti-missile defense system aimed at protecting Israel from Iran uh, has also arrived in Israel along with the first group of U.S. troops to help install and operate it. Joining us right now is the founder and CEO of Edison Alpha uh, and Israel-Iranian Alliance co-founder Shervin Pishavar. Shervin, good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. What do you want to say about the current state of war on Israel today? Israel is conducting a, a war on seven different fronts uh, against the Islamic regime of Iran. This, you know, we have to be upfront. This, this is a actual war with the Islamic regime that has funded this entire, uh, you know, uh, network of terrorism throughout the, the Middle East and has surrounded Israel. Uh, this is a seven-front war uh, that. A, a very small population in Israel is having to uh, face this existential threat. Um, and the fact that the Biden-Harris administration has effectively abandoned uh, its strongest ally yep. in the Middle East uh, is a historic moment uh, that we need to also reflect on uh, because it's a massive change in U.S. policy um, and it threatens uh, not just Israel, but really the security of everyone. Our moral security yep. presages physical security. Well, These policies, uh, yes. You, you, you make it the right point. Even uh, Reza Pahlavi was on this program, uh, the crown prince, former crown prince of Iran, and, and talked about the Biden-Harris administration's policies, which have actually uh, enabled Iran to generate billions of dollars in oil revenue and, in effect, use that money to back and support these terrorist proxies. Here's Reza Pahlavi with me just two weeks ago. Watch. They were not, because the hundred-plus billion dollars that the regime had access to uh, a couple years ago, uh, closing into what happened and ultimately led to uh, empowering it to support its proxies, uh, including Hezbollah and Hamas, of course, didn't come from nowhere. If, if those old sanctions uh, were imposed, that would be a hundred billion less for the regime to spend. And, and, you know, it's, they're going one step further at the Biden-Harris administration, right, right. Shervin. I mean, they issued a warning to Israel uh, over Gaza aid. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin sent a letter to senior Israeli officials on Sunday blaming Israel for a drastic drop in humanitarian aid. They're giving Israel 30 days, and they claim this is not a threat. They say, we'll give you 30 days to improve aid deliveries, or the U.S. could halt future weapons transfers and funding. So can you imagine an environment that we're in? Israel is in the fight of its life, Iran generating billions of dollars uh, in, in illicit revenue for oil, China's buying the oil, and, and yet the White House is threatening that they're going to hold back weapons again? It's unconscionable. I, 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 I'm still shocked that we're, we're in this situation. It's obvious that this is a cynical uh, manipulation of the election uh, because they're so afraid of losing the Michigan vote uh, and, uh, and in swing states where there's Muslim uh, voters. Um, they're, they're doing it because of that, and, and they're giving up on our strongest ally. Uh, we still have four American hostages uh, in, in Gaza being held by Hamas. Um, and, you know, and, well, this, is, this is just a, a, really a shock to the system, morally and ethically, uh, and in terms of international policy, this is a turning point uh, that we need to all think about. So what do you want to say to the people of Iran? Because, you know, Reza Pahlavi made the right point when I was with him as well. This is not about the people of Iran. This is, they are victims. This is about the Iranian regime who hates Trump, hates America, and for some reason this administration is obsessed with doing a new Iran nuclear deal with them. Any comment that you want to address the Iranian people here? Absolutely. To, to my Iranian brothers and sisters, um, all, all of the diaspora and, and the world is with you. 
Um, and, you know, uh, we have also the Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi. Uh, I spoke at his uh, conference at NUFTI uh, just a couple weeks ago. And one of the things I talked about was right. painting a picture of what Iran could have been. Could have uh, been, right. You know, before 1979, before the Islamic terrorist regime took over in the revolution of 1979. Iran was at the cusp of, of, of greatness in 1978 uh, when, when the Crown Prince's father, uh, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, was, was, was the king. Um, and there's 88 million right. people that have been in prison for 45 years held hostage by this Islamic regime. Israel uh, and Ju the Jewish people and the Iranian people have been allies for thousands of years. Right. Uh, Cyrus the Great freed the Jews and rebuilt their temples. There's but a biblical connection between Sherman, the two people. And I think is Biden now, is Biden now is getting doing. religion? I mean, is Biden now getting religion? I mean, we're learning that he's reportedly instructed his National Security Council to make clear to Iran that any attempt on President Donald Trump's life would be used as an act of war. He probably watched my interview with Trump on Sunday. Here's what Donald Trump told me earlier this week. Watch. Biden should do something else. He should tell Iran where I do have an open death threat. If you touch this guy, who's a former president, and now he's the leading candidate to be president, we're going to blow your whole damn country up. And then it would stop immediately. They cannot threaten an ex-president who is a very strong, you saw the betting odds there through the roof, right, is a strong possibility to become the president again. Sherman, do you believe attacking a former U.S. president is an act of war? I mean, Trump's been hacked by Iran. We know that. They have an active uh, fatwa on his back. They want to take him out. Um, and so far, Biden hasn't done anything about it. Now we understand that Biden is telling Iran that's an act of war. You better not do it. How do you see it? It's absolutely an act of war, and it, it, it's shocking that it took this long when the intelligence was there that they're attempting to do this. Um, we need to do everything to protect our, our presidents, uh, President Trump and, and everyone, uh, and that is an act of war. Um, and so uh, I, I, I do think that all of the appeasement that has happened goes against even this declaration by, by Biden. Uh, they've been appeasing the Islamic regime. They've given up $250 billion during the Trump administration, it was down to 300,000 barrels of oil a day. They were almost bankrupt. Yep. And now it's 3 million barrels of oil a day. And that's what's funded this entire crisis yep. uh, and, and all of the proxies uh, throughout, throughout the Middle East for, for Iran. Right. On a, uh, Sherman, on another day, I might have talked to you about all of your phenomenal investments and innovation. Today, we're talking about your background and what you want to talk about in terms of Iran. And we appreciate your insights all around. Thank you, sir. Thank Sherman Pishivar joining us. We'll see you soon, sir. We'll be right back.